Hello there, my name's Scott. Today I'm going to be doing a review on the Mr. Silica Hybrid, which I purchased from www.finnovate.com. Okay, so no need for any disclaimers. Let's go straight ahead and show you in a bit more detail. Okay, so here we have the Mr. Silica Hybrid, which I'm pretty certain is the first silica-based hybrid to actually come onto the market. And for those who are unaware, a hybrid is either a buildable atomizer and like the main body all built into one unit. This particular one is made out of stainless steel, and I can tell you now that this is one solid, heavy, and sturdy device. I mean, like, you could probably throw this off a cliff and uh, still uh, not cause any damage to it whatsoever. It really is a very solid build. However, on a slightly less positive note, when they send these out to customers, they really do need to pay a little bit more attention to detail because uh, when I got mine, just about every thread on every part had a lot of excess swarf in it, like little sort of splinters of metal. And there's been uh, quite a few times now where I've gone to either unscrew something or screw a part on, and the parts have just pretty much all locked together because there's a little bit of swarf there. It's got caught in between the threads and just made it really difficult to actually uh, unscrew. And uh, you know, on a couple of occasions now, I've had to get a set of pipe grips out, grab hold of the body in order to be able to get a decent enough purchase to actually undo them. And unfortunately there, I did uh, slip on one occasion and gave it a rather nasty scratch. Having said that though, over the last sort of two weeks where I've been removing these little bits of swarf when I found them, I think I've got rid of every little bit now. And now, this is how it should have come to me, but now it's absolutely perfect. All the parts, smooth as butter, nice good quality threads there. But like I said, I do need to uh, pay a bit more attention to detail before they start sending these out to the customers. Okay, so here we have all the parts that make up the mister. So you have the bottom button switch, you then have the battery tube, and this particular one is for an 18500 battery, but I did read on the form that they're also going to make ones for an 18350 battery, as well as the larger 18650. You then have the atomizer section, the mouthpiece which also acts as a juice control, the, uh, the body for the tank, and the tank holds around 4.5 millilitres of e-liquid, and then you have the top cap. Okay, so here we have the bottom button switch. On the very base it has some uh, laser engraving, though it does seem to be on there, pretty faint to be honest. In the centre you've got a nice large ventilation hole, so if you was very unfortunate and happened to have a battery that was venting gases, and those gases do have a means to escape. As far as I can tell, the uh, switch uses sort of two springs that are working against each other. The first spring is going to be attached to this black circular piece. And when you've got the battery in position and you're screwing this into the, uh, into the body, the battery will fall set inwards and you can see the actual switch part will then stick out. Once that's sticking out, you can then obviously uh, press the switch and hopefully you can just about see there that as you press that, the brass contact pin will come up and make contact with the battery. When I first got this, the actual uh, sort of action of the switch was uh, very gritty. It wasn't particularly nice to use, but again, over a course of a couple of weeks, it's freed up nicely. And now it goes in there really nice and smooth. The switch also has a locking feature. So at the moment, it's in its open position. I can press that in, have a vape. If I want to lock it though, I've just got to give it a couple of spins. And that's it, it's now locked. One thing I will say though, is that there's no sort of actual end point here when you lock it. So you can uh, basically just keep on going and the old thing will start unscrewing from the body there. So uh, no, as long as you're sort of keeping an eye on it and not going too far, then it's not an issue though. Okay, so here we have the atomizer section. This side here is going to attach to the battery body. You can see you've got a nice big uh, brass contact there. And this side is going to attach to the tank body. In the centre, you're going to find quite a large air hole. I think it's around sort of two millimetres. And it starts from the centre and then works its way to the outside there. You then have your positive and your negative terminals. And then two little slots cut either side here, which are going to basically sort of uh, hold the wick in place. And then once you've got the juice control added, as you sort of uh, screw the juice control up or down, you can then obviously uh, control how much juice is going to get fed to the wick and then obviously up to the heating coil. Okay, so what I'm going to do now then is show you how I've been uh, getting my mister all set up. Now when it comes to doing this, there is no right way or wrong way of doing it. Whatever method works for you personally, that is the best method to use. I've tried uh, quite a few different setups. I've gone from sort of 0.16 nichrome wire up to 0.28 gauge canthal, 
and they all seem to give really good results so it does seem to be quite a forgiving sort of an atomizer to use so from a beginner's uh, perspective or somebody who's uh, quite new to the uh, rebuildables it should be a nice easy one for you to get set up and running okay so uh, for this example then i'm going to be using some 0.28 gauge canthal wire and i've got some i think it's a two millimeter wick okay so hopefully you can see here that i've got one long piece of wick then a short piece of wick sitting on top and i've got them both sort of resting on top of a little pin and the idea of the pin is just to basically sort of uh, help me wrap my coils just to make it a little bit more sort of uh, easier for me to do so what i'm going to do i'm just going to take my wire hold it all in one place i'm going to wrap um, probably around sort of seven coils and i want the one end of the wire to finish on this side and one end of the wire to finish on that side So you should have something that looks a little bit like that. Okay, so what I'm going to do then is just position the coil so it's directly over the central hole there. And so roughly the two pieces of wick are lined up to uh, where the slots are going to be. And then from there you can just hold it in position and feed each piece of wire underneath the terminal and just uh, tighten it up. To remove the excess wire, you can use a pair of cutters if you want, but uh, me personally, I just prefer to apply a bit of tension, give it a bit of a wiggle, and it should snap off nice and clean. Now the coil is in position, we can uh, remove the pin, and then uh, just trim up the, uh, the pieces of wick. I'm going to start off with the little short piece, just sort of cut it off nice and flush there. And on the other side. Helps if I've got a decent set of scissors. And then when it comes to cutting the, uh, the wick off here, I normally just rest with scissors there, cut it, hold it down a little bit rest my scissors and cut it. Okay, so for the next stage, I'll need to uh, install the battery and add on the atomizer part just to make sure the coils are gonna fire up correctly. So what we've got to do is take the switch housing, screw that into the base of the body, take the battery, negative ending first, and then take the atomizer section and screw that onto the top. And hopefully when I unlock this and press the switch, you should be able to see the coils all lighting up. And that seems to be fine. Okay, so hopefully you can see that I've just uh, pushed the two ends of the wick into the two little slots there. And before I add the juice control, I'm just gonna add some e-liquid to the coil just to sort of uh, prime it up a little bit. Make sure it's going to fire up again. That seems to be fine. And then from there, you just take the juice control and screw that into place. And hopefully, you can see that uh, as you uh, screw this up or unscrew it, you're exposing more of the wick. Obviously, that means that more liquid is going to get fed up onto that wick and up onto the heating coil, which allows you to actually sort of uh, control the amount of juices uh, going up there. Okay, so now the, uh, the coil's all been set up and you've got your mouthpiece and juice control in place. What you need to do is just attach your tank and fill it up with a liquid. Before you fill it up, you just want to make sure that, that juice control is fully closed. And then just take your juice and fill it up to uh, just below the threads there. And like I said, it can hold around sort of four and a half mil of e-liquid. I think I've nearly finished the bottle here actually now. That'll do. And then from there, just take the top cap and then screw it into place. Like I said, make sure, it's quite important that you make sure that the uh, juice control is fully closed. 
otherwise the pressure is going to just make it sort of flood. And just uh, screw the top cap on nice and slowly. And you should be good to go. Okay, so at this stage now, I normally would uh, have a few vapes, and then uh, once I start sort of uh, noticing a bit of a dry hit, then I'll unscrew the juice control. But we'll uh, open it up straight away now, just to sort of uh, show you. You have these little laser etched lines on the juice control mouthpiece there. Now basically, once you see one of the lines, that means that the juice control has actually started to uh, open, and the wick has been exposed. If you see the next line, then it means you've gone too far. So you just want it so it's about there and you should be fine. And you should be able to just sort of uh, vape continuously until the tank uh, runs dry. Okay, so that is the mister. Let's go ahead, see what it vapes like. Okay, so that was the mister silica hybrid. And what I'll do now is go ahead and show in action. So I'm using seven wraps of the 0.28 gauge canthal. Not got a clue what the resistance is because I can't be asked to measure it. But I'm going to assume it's around 1.2, 1.3 ohms. The tank has been filled up with some 16 milligram strength uh, tobacco extract flavoured e-liquid. And the, uh, the battery came off the charger around sort of 30 minutes ago. We're now having a bit of a vape with a cup of tea. So it should be reading probably around sort of 3.94 volts, something like that. Okay, so this is the mister. So as you can see, like vapor-wise, you know, you're getting uh, plenty of vapor out of it. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, normally at this stage, I'll be saying, you know, vapor production and throw heat is going to be quite dependent on your own personal setup. But I've tried so many different setups. I've gone from high-resistance coils to low-resistance coils. I've been using 0.16 nichrome wire, 0.28 gauge camphor wire, everything in between. And everything seems to give me uh, really good results. It does seem to be a very sort of uh, forgiving atomizer. And no matter how much you uh, or how you set it up, you still seem to get uh, really good results out of it. So it probably is still down to your own personal setup, but I would have thought that regardless of uh, how you set it up, you should still get a you know, really good amount of uh, vapor production and throw hip. Flavor-wise, is absolutely fantastic with the uh, tobacco extract uh, style of e-liquids and personally i think this produces far better flavor than genesis atomizers when it comes to those uh, type of e-liquids because uh, you know i'm a big fan of the genesis ones but uh, i said this one just absolutely canes it when it comes to the uh, tobacco extract flavoring so for me personally i'm getting absolutely tons of flavor out of it Um, the warmth of the vapour, I find it to be quite a nice warm vape. Um, with the size of the air hole, you'd expect it to be a, quite a cooler vape, but it's definitely a, more on the warm side. If I was going to say one was really cold, five was really hot, for me it's probably around sort of three and a half, four, so you know, pretty much just how I like it really. Ease of setup, again, it's probably uh, one of the easiest ones that you can, easiest uh, silica sort of base atomizers that you can set up, really. Um, it's like they've taken away all the bells and whistles, just put the basics in, basics in there, and the basics work, you know, absolutely fine. You back your coil, connect it to the terminals, put your tank on, have a vape, you know, so you can't really sort of get much sort of simpler than that. So if I was going to say one was really hard, five was really easy, I'm going to say it's a, well, I'm going to say it's a five. Nice and simple. I forgot to mention about the, uh, the draw actually, uh, which I should have done before that. The draw on it, it's got quite a large air hole, so I not, don't know the exact sort of uh, measurements, but I'm going to assume it's around, or guesstimate around sort of, uh, sort of two millimetres, something like that. So it is quite an airy draw. But um, I find that uh, you know you do get used to it very quickly, and um, 
normally I would prefer to have quite a tighter draw. And uh, when I go to an atomizer that's got a looser draw, at first it seems sort of very, very alien, I suppose. But then the more you use it, the more you get used to it, then when you do eventually go back to the tighter draw atomizers, they end up feeling uh, quite odd. So just like the more you use it, the more you're going to get used to it, really. So I wouldn't let that put you off. And at, you know, worst case scenario, you can always get a little bit of mesh, roll it up, stick it in the hole there, and that will tighten the draw up. If I was going to say um, like one was a really loose draw, five was a really tight draw, it's probably going to be around sort of two, something like that. The uh, battery life on it, obviously this is the uh, 18500 one. They did say in the future they're going to be using uh, or making 18350 tubes, uh, which obviously going to make the actual uh, Mr. Shorter, but it's also going to make the battery life shorter. Or you can get the longer 18650 tubes, which will make the Mr. Longer, but then obviously you're going to get longer battery life. With the 14500s, I'm going for around sort of two batteries a day. So it's not brilliant, but it's, uh, it's not bad either. But I prefer using the, 14, uh, the 18500 batteries. Just makes the uh, overall sort of device just a nice size, really. Build quality. Um, it's a completely and utterly solid, sturdy device. And like I said, you know, you can probably throw that off the cliff and you're not going to cause any damage to it at all. It really is a very solid. Uh, initial sort of first impressions, though, were very, very disappointing because of the amount of sort of uh, swarf that was on the threads. And, uh, you know, there's quite a few times where I had real problems unscrewing parts or screwing parts on because of the little bits of uh, swarf were getting caught in between the threads and obviously then they're just sort of jamming the pieces together. Once I got rid of all those little bits and bobs, though, that was sort of uh, letting it down. Now everything screws up, you know, perfectly fine and smooth now, which is how you how it should have been when I got it, really. And I know that uh, I'm not the only one who's experienced that. A few people on the forums have mentioned it as well. And uh, in their defence, finvape.com have replied to the forums and said, you know, they're going to be uh, making sure that doesn't happen again. So if you did get one, hopefully the, all those sort of little issues should have been sorted out. The uh, switch on it, again, when I first got it, couldn't stand it because uh, it was very gritty. I had a lot of problems sort of uh, pushing it in and sometimes it was going in and sticking and I couldn't get it back out again. The locking mechanism was just, uh, you know, just gritty. Everything about it just was gritty, basically. After a while, though, it eventually started loosening up. All those little bursts started sort of dropping out of it. And uh, now it's a really nice action. Got a nice sort of tension of the spring now. The actual locking mechanism works perfectly, nice and smooth. Like I said, with the locking mechanism, you do have to sort of uh, keep your eye on just how far you unscrew it, because if you keep on unscrewing it, like the actual sort of internals of the uh, the switch will actually come out of the uh, like the switch housing now. But uh, as long as you're sort of you know, just looking at it and think, well, okay, that's met up now, no problems there whatsoever. So, like I said, when I first got the uh, when I first got the Mister, the switch was absolutely awful, but now it's uh, now it's all sort of uh, worn in nicely. Got rid of all the uh, little burrs and the bits of swarf. It's a really nice uh, switch to use. Um, <clears throat> to sort of summarise, it's uh, an extremely sturdy device. Um, it was initially let down by the uh, like the swarf in the threads. Once you got those uh, bits and pieces out of the way. Really nice, uh, good quality threading. Everything smooth, everything screws up as smooth as butter. And like I said, that's how it should have come to me, really, though. Uh, it performs excellently. You're getting plenty of vapour, tons of flavour, plenty of throat heat, getting nice warm vapour as well. So anything negative I've said about it, you know, its performance sort of um, overcomes that, really. And, uh, you know, in terms of performance, you can't really fault it. Like I said, you know, it just seems to uh, really hit the spot in terms of flavour vapour, throw hit, etc, etc. Um, not a great deal, so I can really tell you. If you fancy trying one out for yourself, go along to www.finvape.com. Thank you very much for watching. Also, come along and visit my website at www.esigreviews.com. That's e-sig-reviews.com. Cheers, guys. Happy vaping. See you later.